Telling an original from the real deal is not simple, but as Jeff White found out in Prague, technology is making the process easier. A room full of Rubens at Prague's National Gallery. Even the untrained eye can tell the work of a master, but it's not always easy. Recent forgery scandals have got the art world in a spin. Question is, up close and personal, could you spot the imposter? The National Gallery up there has a team of people whose job it is to make sure the works on display are the real deal. All the big art institutions do, but it doesn't always work. Some of the world's greatest galleries have been caught out by the forgers. Can technology help? Here in Prague, they're using space industry tech to see if it can spot a fake. This Prague startup has got a challenge for you. Which ones are the fakes? This, for example, looks like an Edvard Munch. If so, Conservator Jury is handling millions of pounds. The truth will be revealed when it goes in the scanner. So on this side we have an X-ray tube, uh -huh. which emits X-rays. Of course, it's not emitting X-rays at the moment. Of course, this is switched off. But on the other side, super sensitive detectors, first developed at CERN, the world's largest particle physics lab. It's a new generation of X-ray imaging detectors that allow uh, measuring also wavelength of, of X-rays. So in a way we can create color X-ray images. And those colors reveal layers and even ingredients of the paint, sometimes ingredients way too modern for the alleged artist. And we can also distinguish different materials, which may or may not be from the period the painting is supposed to be from. And with robotic arms, they're hoping to scan more than just paintings. Sculptures, pottery, even entire pieces of furniture. What about that Edvard Munk? After a few hours scanning, the moment of truth. The X-rays revealed a hidden secret. Hang on, if you see... What do you see? <laughs> That's a vase of flowers, isn't it? Uh -huh. Munk rarely did flowers, and the scans showed titanium in the paint. Munk didn't use that. So whoever's got this hasn't got an Edvard Munk on their hands. <laughs> Have you told him? Does he know? Oh, uh, yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> but Jury thinks he has found a genuine work, and it's potentially a very very big deal. This looks like a Vincent van Gogh landscape. It's from a private collection. You're seeing it for the first time. And the scan has revealed a vital piece of hidden evidence. So there is a head. Oh, there's there, a head. There are the shoulders, the hands uh -huh. uh, and legs here. Wow. It's an unfinished female nude of exactly the type van Gogh painted. The artist was frequently so poor, he reused canvases. Jury thinks this is the real deal, and it's a big moment. It was a crazy feeling, because when I seen it, it was like, ah, what is it? I can believe it, because uh, in, in your life, uh, like a uh, restorator, this is a uh, really special moment. The scans, along with years' worth of other evidence, will be sent to the Vincent van Gogh Foundation. If they decide it's real, it would be one of only two full-size Van Gogh paintings discovered in the last 80 years. The last one sold for almost £40 million. Insight Art scanning is just one of a battery of high-tech methods now authenticating art. Mobile apps can be used to track pictures around the world. Artificial intelligence can be used to compare individual brushstrokes High-frequency scanning can reveal minute imperfections, all an effort to keep ahead of the forgers. Speaking of whom, welcome to David Henty's house. There's a Walter Sickert in the spare room, a Caravaggio at the end of the bed, oh, and a Francis Bacon. And out on the balcony... Let's have a look, see what you've got out here. For these some wow. paintings here. Wow. But none of these are actually real, they're all fake, these pictures. Well, oh, again, <laughs> depends who's asking. <laughs> There's only probably one or two percent of the world that can afford a hundred million Picasso. So if you want a Picasso, the way I look at it, this is the nearest you're going to get to it, is a David Henty Picasso. 
Before he was exposed by a national newspaper, David sold his forgeries but carefully stopped short of claiming they were definitely the real deal. When I was forging, I've seen my paintings in the, um, at the auction catalogues, um, but I wouldn't like to say which ones because, you know, it gets someone into trouble, not me, because I sold them legally. Now he's gone straight. His buyers know they're getting a forgery, albeit a lovingly crafted one. And anti-forgery tech is all part of the fun for fakers. As soon as you come up with a bit of technology, we're looking for a way to get round it, um, which is what forgers do, a good forger would do. According to one former FBI art investigator, the forgery market's worth up to $6 billion. And with skills like David's on display, the art world might want to turn to the latest tech before signing off on that multi-million pound deal.